everyone, this is Heather with Treasured Hometown. Today I want to go over with you how to make this lovely sunflower water bottle holder. It has this lovely little strap onto it. it Make simply with the round granny squares. Fits easily a little reusable water bottle inside of them right into it. It's got a thicker strap also so that it makes it easier also. I barely even notice it, even with the water bottle full, carrying it around. So I hope you all enjoy it. And if you are looking to get a physical PDF copy of the pattern, I will go ahead and post a link to my Etsy uh, for you right into this description. So if you'd like to, you can go ahead and get one. Otherwise, enjoy watching the video. For this pattern, we'll need a couple of supplies in order to do this. First, we'll need a pair of scissors, uh, that is in order to cut our yarn. Some darning needles. Uh, I always usually like to have a little threader because I am terrible at working the yarn through the darning needles. We'll be using a three millimeter crochet hook for this one. I have heard someone say that it is having difficulty trying to find a three millimeter. If you can't get a three millimeter, I'd say the next size I would say is maybe go down to a 2.75 millimeter, but then just work your stitches slightly looser in order to achieve the gauge. I do recommend a stitch gauge uh, for it. It's just so you can keep track of your uh, uh, gauge for everything. So how many stitches per inch. And we'll need some yarn also. Uh, first color, I use Yarn B Bamboo Tiffle, which is a, a number three weight uh, yarn for it. It's half cotton, half viscose from bamboo. And I used colors Sage, Mustard, and Cognac. And for this pattern, you're going to need roughly 30 yards of the mustard. 30 yards of the cognac, and approximately 110 yards of the sage. All right, to begin this project, we're going to start off by creating a magic circle, otherwise known as an adjustable ring. So we insert our hook through the circle, pull up a loop, and then we simply do a slip stitch to tighten it off. Okay, and then we're going to chain three. And then what we want to do is do 15 double crochets into the ring. So as a reminder, how to do a, a double crochet is you simply yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through two loops, yarn over and go through your last two loops. All right, and so we want to do a total of 15 of those. All right, now that you have your 15 double crochets, pull the tail of your magic circle to bring everything in tight. Then what we want to do is slip stitch into that third chain of our first chain three of the round in order to join. Now we have our first round. For our next round, what we're going to do is chain three, or I'm sorry, chain two, and then into that same stitch that we did our slip stitch into, what we want to do is do two half double crochets together. So what we're going to do is yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, and then we want to yarn over, go into the same stitch, pull up a loop, 
And then we want to yarn over and go through all loops and then we chain one. Then into our next stitch, what we want to do is three half double crochets together. So we yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all of the loops. And my yarn has decided it's not gonna cooperate right now. <laughs> and then you simply chain one. So we want to do three half double crochets together into each stitch all the way around. So we've done that first one because it had started off with the chain, so that was only two into there. So the rest of them, we wanna do three into each stitch. So continue that around. We should be repeating that 14 times. All right, now that we've done all those, you should have 15 little clusters, or 16 little clusters. What we want to do is slip stitch into our second chain of our first chain three of the round, and then we can go ahead and tie off. And that is round two. For round three, we want to take our mustard color yarn And what we're going to do is attach that into one of the chain one spaces. With just a simple slip stitch. All right, and then what we want to do is chain three. And then what we want to do is double crochet four together into that same chain space. So to do that, yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, or the chain space, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through your first two stitches, or two loops. Now we've done one, so we want four all together, so one, two, three, four. Now if you look, you have one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook. Now yarn over and go through all five loops and then chain two. Now for our next one, what we want to do is we want to put five double crochet together into the next chain one space. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through your first two loops. And we wanna repeat that for five more, or four more times. Now we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six loops on our hook. Yarn over and go through all six loops and then chain two. And we wanna repeat that, the double crochet five together into each chain one space all the way around. At the end, we should have 16 total clusters.
All right, now that you have all 16 little clusters made, what we want to do is slip stitch into our third chain of our first chain three of the round in order to join. And go ahead and tie off. And there we have our four, third round completed. For our fourth round, we want to take our sage yarn, create your slip knot, attach our sage yarn, and we're just going to attach that into one of the chain two spaces. Pull it tight. And then we're going to chain three. Then we're gonna double crochet into that same chain two space. And then we're gonna double crochet again into that same chain two space and then chain one. So we attach chain three and then two double crochets into that same chain space and then chain one. Into our next chain two space, we're going to put into there three half double crochets. Got one, two, three, and then chain one. Into the next chain two space, we're gonna put three double crochets. And then chain one. Into our next chain two space, what we're gonna do is put three treble crochets, also known as a triple crochet. I've heard them both terms used. So to do that stitch, we yarn over twice, go into the chain space and pull up a loop, yarn over and go through our first two loops, yarn over, go through your next two loops, yarn over and go through your last two loops. Now we're gonna repeat that two more times. and then we're gonna chain two. And then we want to do three more treble crochets into that same chain two space. and then chain one. Into our next chain two space, what we're going to do is three double crochets. And then chain one. Then into our next chain two space, we're going to put three half double crochets. And then chain one. And to the next chain two space, we want three double crochets. and then chain one. And then into our next chain two space, we wanna put three treble crochets.
and then chain two, and then three more treble crochets into that same chain two space. And then chain one. And then we want to put two or three double crochets into the next chain two space. And then chain one. Then we want three half double crochets into the next chain two space. And then chain one, and then three double crochets into the next chain two space. And then chain one, then we want three treble crochets into the next chain two space. And then chain two, and then three more treble crochets into that same chain two space. And then chain one, three double crochets into the next chain two space. And then chain one, three half double crochets into the next chain two space. chain one, and then three double crochets into the next chain two space. And then chain one, then into our last chain two space, we want three treble crochets into there. Then chain two, and then three more treble crochets into that same chain sp two space. And then chain one. And then we're going to slip stitch into our third chain of our first chain three of this round. And then we'll simply tie off. And that is our fourth round. So what we're gonna wanna do is repeat those steps uh, until we have six of these little sunflowers created.
Right. Our next step would be to make the bottom of our bag. So what it is, is gonna be a circle. So we're going to create our magic circle. And then we're going to chain one. And then into the magic circle, we're going to put seven single crochets All right, and then pull our circle together. Now, because the stitches are can be very difficult to find on this first one, since we're working in single crochets, I like to count back to find that first chain one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right here was our first chain one of the round. So we're going to slip stitch into that stitch in order to join our round. If I can get my hook to come through. <laughs> All right, so there is round one. For round two, what we're going to do is chain one then into each stitch, we're gonna do two single crochets. And then it's a little bit easier to see where our first stitch was, our first chain one of the round, because we can see a little bit more where the single crochets went into. So we're going to slip stitch into that first chain one of the round in order to join. And there is round two. Right, now for round three, we're going to chain one into our first stitch of the round. We're going to put two single crochets and then into our next stitch we're going to put one single crochet and then we're just going to repeat that for each stitch all the way around two single crochets into the first stitch and then one single crochet into the next stitch. And we want to repeat that six more times. You'll have a total of 21 stitches in this row. And then we're going to slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. And there we have round three. For round four, we'll have a total of 28 stitches. And for this round, what we want to do, not including our first chain one, is do our chain one and then two single crochets into our first stitch. And then one single crochet into the next two stitches. And we just want to repeat that six more times. Two single crochets into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next two stitches. All right, and then we want to slip stitch into that first chain one of the round in order to join. 
And then we have round four. Round five, what we're going to do is chain one. And then this row will then have a total of 35 stitches. So what we're going to do is put two single crochets into our first stitch. And then one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then we just want to repeat that for this round six more times, two single crochets into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then we want to slip stitch into our first chain one of our round in order to join Right, and that is round five. For round six, what we're going to do is chain one. And then we want to single crochet two times into your first stitch. And then we want to put one single crochet into the next four stitches. And then we just want to repeat that two single crochets into the first stitch, one single crochet into the next four stitches. And we want to repeat that six times. And this row should have a total of 42 stitches. All right, and now we want to slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. And that is row six. For row seven, what we want to do is chain one. And then into our first stitch, we want to do two single crochets and then we want to put one single crochet into the next five stitches and then we just want to repeat that six more times two single crochets into the first stitch one single crochet into the next five stitches. And this round should have a total of 49 stitches. And then we want to slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. And that is row seven. For row eight, what we're going to do is, once again, chain one. And then we want to do two single crochets into our first stitch. And then we want to put one single crochet into the next six stitches. And you just want to repeat that six more times. Two single crochets into your first stitch, one single crochet into the next six stitches, 
and the row should have a total of 56 stitches. All right, and then what we want to do is slip stitch into our first chain one of the round in order to join. And that is row eight. For row nine, what we want to do is chain one. And then into our first stitch, we want to put two single crochets. And then we want to put one single crochet into the next seven stitches. And then we're just going to repeat that two single crochets into the first stitch one single crochet into the next seven stitches and we want to repeat that six more times this row should end up with a total of 63 stitches And then we just want to slip stitch into our first chain one of the round to join. And we can go ahead and tie off. And there you are. There's the bottom of your bag with row nine. All right, so now we have all of our pieces made. Now what we need to do is stitch together all of our pieces. So we're going to start with two of our little flower squares. Now what we want to do is find into our corners, we had two chains. What we want to do is to find the lower chain, the one chain that comes down the side. So one chain would be along the top, one for down the side to complete the square. And we want to put a stitch from that one to the one same chain onto the other side after we've threaded our yarn into our darning needle and just go ahead and pull that through. And then we can go ahead and tie a knot right into that piece to hold the yarn steady so it does not come out. And then what we want to do is these should all, unless your stitches are off, you've made a mistake and skipped a stitch somewhere, they shall match up stitch per stitch. So then you want to go into the next stitch, would be the stitch on top of your first treble crochet there in the corner, and just go right through those two, sewing them together, and just keep going down the side stitch per stitch. stitch on this square will be that first chain of our chain two into the corners. All right, so now we have those two squares together. Now we want to take two more squares, make sure to match those up. And then just going from there, we want to go into, it'll be that first, the lower chain one of the chain two, lower chain of the chain two, so the one that's more on this side that we're going to start working now. And we just go ahead and stitch right into there and we continue matching stitch to stitch all the way down along this side. Right now, 
we've done into that first little chain want the first chain of our chain two space now we want to take our bottom right now we want to attach this because this is going up onto the bag so we want to take and go into onto this side of our squares go into that second chain there and then we want to attach that into one of our stitches here on the very bottom. For our bag bottom. And then we just want to go also along that stitch per stitch, attaching along this bottom square to our bottom of our bottle bag. All right, so we've just done that all the way up to the first chain one of our chain two space. So we've attached that square to the bottom. Now we're going to turn and we're going to start working back up this side. So we want to take one more square. And what we're going to do, bring our yarn up and go into that chain one onto the side. We're going to match it up also into that one chain one of the chain two on the other side. I'm just going to run our yarn through there. And we're going to continue going up the side, matching stitch per stitch on these two squares. All right, now that we've gone up and attached that square, now what we want to do, just show you a little layout. What we want to do is add the square that goes over here in this corner. So we're going to come in and into once again, because we're working up this side, so the chain one on this side of the chain two, match it up to that same stitch on this side. And we just keep following. Don't stick yourself with the needle like I just did. All the way up the side, stitch to stitch. All right. Now we've finished up with those top chain one spaces. Now for here, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and tie off and weave in this little bit of extra yarn on our needle and we'll thread some fresh yarn into it. And just to show you how that's looking so far. All right, now we're going to come back down here and we're going to, from here, move around the bottom edge of this bag, attaching it to the bottom of the bag. And then we're going to move up so that we attach this side to the rest of the bag. So we come down and we'll insert our needle into that chain one space into that that last chain of our chain two space and go ahead and tie our yarn and this on the bottom goes into the next single crochet stitch And then we just want to match up stitch to stitch. All right, now that we have that section onto the bottom, as you can see here. 
Now what we want to do is sew up along this side to bring these pieces together. So we're going to insert our needle into the chain two, but the chain one that's along this side and the same along here. And we want to match up stitch per stitch going all the way up this side. Now that we're at that chain one space, we want to attach, continuing moving up, these two keep working on the same line. All right, now that we've gotten all the way up that side done, now we just need to come through. We need to stitch the siding here and this little piece also back together. Now you could come through and tie off, or I am actually just going to weave my yarn through the stitching coming back down. All right, and then we just want to move around this seam and we want to get those chain one spaces. We just want to match up stitch per stitch and go all the way around this side. Well, the whole center seam of our bag. All right, now that we've got that side down, I'm just going to run my needle down this side in order to get down here and sew together that last little bit of the bottom. All right, and then I like to add a couple more little stitches right into that seam. And then you just simply weave in and tie off your remaining yarn. And 
And here we have the bag so far. Yes, we will need to come in and weave in all these little extra strings along the way. I will go ahead and weave in those and I'll be right back as soon as I'm ready to show you how to make the top finish and the handle. All right now, what we need to do is put the top border onto our bag. So what we're gonna do is take our yarn and attach it into one of the stitches along the top rim. Doesn't really matter which. I'm just picking a nice easy one to go ahead and find. All right. Then we simply want to chain three. And then what we're going to do is simply double crochet into each stitch all the way around the top rim of our bag. You should have 62 double crochets made plus our chain three. So 63 all the way around this top rim of our bag. All right, and then for our last stitch, we're going to slip stitch into the third chain of our first chain three of the round in order to join. Mm -hmm. That is our first row for the opening. All right, so we've done our first layer around the top edge of the bag. So what we're going to do is do one more row just to, you know, tie it off and make it a little bit neater. So we'll train three and then we're just going to double crochet into each stitch around one more time. And then whenever we get back to the front, we're just going to slip stitch into the third chain of our first chain three to join. And I'll be back to show you how to make the strap. All right, so we have our two rows on the top of the bag to give it a nice little finish. Now for creating the strap, uh, simply what we're going to do, because it is holding a water bottle and larger ones tend to can be kind of heavy. So I want to make a little bit thicker of a strap. So we're going to chain three, and then we're gonna double crochet into the next five stitches. All right, it's our first row for it. Now for the second row, what we're going to do is chain three, turn our work, and then double crochet into the next five stitches again. And so we're just going to repeat that, chain three, 
turn and double crochet into the next five stitches until you have the desired length of the strap that you are wanting. All right, now that we have our strap made, I went with that repeat for 75 times. By all means, you can add or subtract from that number uh, to your exact specifications, however you'd like. I usually just would take it and then just kind of set this off to the side and set it over my shoulder just to, you know, get a feel for it. So that's how I decided I liked 75 rows. And now what we want to do is take our darning needle and we'll go ahead and uh, tie off. So we'll thread our yarn into our darning needle leaving the tail a little bit extra long. We don't need a whole huge amount, but we do want a little bit extra so we can weave it in. And then we're going to take our bag and lay it flat. Now I fold it so that the edge over here is matching up. And then just kind of following along to the opposite side and take our strap now we could count out stitch, 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 but it's also an odd number, so it'll be off by one. So making sure our strap is not twisted at all, matching it up to the opposite side. All right, now that we have our placement, we're going to take our needle and start with the last stitch, the top of it, and just match it up stitch to stitch to the bottom row onto the bag and we're just going to stitch those together. We can also, instead of darning, we could use a slip stitch uh, in order to weave in all these different pieces, but it does, in my opinion, make a much nicer seam. Some bags I do like having that bigger seam, but this one I decided I didn't want that big seam to show onto it. So this one was definitely a use the darning needle, in my opinion. But by all means, these are your creations also. So go with whichever method you would prefer. All right, now that we've gotten that all stitched on, we simply tie off and weave in the remainder of that end. Now I do like to do this little bit of back stitching just to ensure that even if the end comes loose, I wash it numerous times. I tend to get a lot of things very dirty and grimy. That even if I do get an end that comes loose, it's less likely to completely unravel and I lose the entire bag. Let me just snip off. And there we are, of our lovely water bottle holder bag. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. Uh, and if you want to, go ahead, feel free to share it with your friends also. Um, if you enjoyed it also and you'd like to continue getting a free pattern roughly about once every week, be sure to hit the subscribe button and you'll be able to get a notification onto it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.